Hello, in this video, John's just going to give you a quick introduction into how to tell different aces apart from sycamore through to Japanese maple. The video is not about how to grow aces, it's about how to set about seeing what might be suitable for you in your garden and what you would like. Welcome to John Hossie Horticulture. John's been teaching horticulture professionally for over 30 years now and on this channel we're hoping to help you develop your gardening skills. Whether you're new to gardening and would like some techniques on propagation, growing some vegetables, a bit of pest control, or whether you're a seasoned horty who could always use some extra tips and advice. If you like learning those things, do consider following us. There's no charge. Just push the subscribe button. Don't forget to push the all important notification bell. That lets you know every time we upload a new video. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Today we're starting our series on uh, tree identifications and we're looking to start with the acers or at least a few of them because it's such a big range. Um, I'm going to start off by talking about our, our wild acer, the, the sycamore, um, also known, uh, known as the plain. In fact its name is Acer pseudoplatana, so it's like false plain. But it is actually a true acer. It's quite widely distributed in the country. We think it came in during the 16th century. It's quite uh, a useful uh, tree. It'll take exposed positions and get some decent size and quite a good wood. Uh, when it's growing with other trees, it's tend, we tend to think of it as a bit more of a, uh, a weedy species because it seeds very freely. But uh, I, I mentioned that one. I mentioned the, the sycamore because that's the starting point. It's not really, let say, not really very widely grown or accepted. I can't think of any proper garden use for it. But having said that, there are some nice um, cultivars. There's one called Brilliantissima, which has a very light colour when it comes through in the, in the spring. And Nightshade's Court has got some good examples of it there. Um, another one is called Leopoldii, which has got more, not really a variegation, but very, very light streaks in it. Uh, and good examples of that at Marwood Hill Gardens. So that's the sycamore. Um, and I think, I don't think we need to say an awful lot more about sycamores. Right, well, the, the next of our, our, our aces we look at is called Acer campestri, or the field maple. And this is quite a common plant in, in hedges. It's a native species. Uh, it's got a lovely, very distinctive, very typical maple-like leaf. It's just starting to turn colour there. But if you look in the hedge, you'll see there's quite a lot of it. It's also got an interesting bark, and that sometimes forms quite nice ridges. So it, it's quite an interesting plant in that respect. Um, often grown as a hedge, in this case it's been allowed to grow up as a tree, um, but in a hedge it's very good. Um, being a native tree of course it feeds a lot of native species which is very good. And the other thing about it is it has the most fantastic autumn colour. Um, from yellows right through to oranges, it's, it's a stunning tree. But when you see what it is you'll probably realise you've seen it in the hedge and wonder what it was before. So that's uh, Acer Campest tree. A um, small tree in the, gar in the garden would work well, but uh, hedging is fine as well, or if you've, got, if you've got room for an arboretum, at least put one of them in. Okay, so the next, next one we're going to look at is the Norway maple, and this is Platanoides, another pea, and it has these wonderful large leaves. Um, this is a form called um, Crimson King, which you can see has a wonderful, wonderful autumn colour. Now again, it is, a, it is a tree, so you'd have to be very, very careful where, where you put it. Um, this one, we've had to cut it back it got too big. It's a classic example of the, uh, uh, the, the plant in the wrong place. Should have had far more room, it has not the room here. So, but if, you, if you've got space to put one you know, in, in an arboretum or, or a big garden, beautiful, beautiful plant, and that colour lasts all through the summer, that, that, um, that crimson, and then uh, um, right, right through to the autumn. Now there's another very good form of this one called Drummondii, uh, very good examples of that, at, uh, mainly at Borough Farm Gardens, you've got some beauties down there, uh, and that's got a variegated leaf. So go for the cultivars of that one, that's the um, Norway uh, maple. Okay, so we've looked at the, at the tree acers that you might want, but I think most people, when we talk about acers in the garden, are thinking of acer japonica uh, and uh, acer palmatum. And these are the smaller acers, often with lovely foliage and uh, just really lovely, lovely little trees, perfect for a small garden. Um, contrary to popular belief, they can be cut back and be kept within shape. And you can see I've cut this one back and it's getting a bit too big. Um, many, many different varieties. I'll show you a few. 
but really if you want to grow these you need to go to someone who's got a good range and they can tell you the colour that you want. Now this is this is one called Katsura which is uh, uh, a beautiful tree, it has you can see the typical leaves of the Acer Shep, uh, wonderful colours both in the spring uh, and later on in the autumn. Uh, quite a, a, a good doer, fairly vigorous but it can be cut back quite hard. Um, this is, as you can see from the situation, it's a bit close, we've got woodland on our, very close to us and they, it does draw all the trees up. But last summer when it was dormant I took it back by about a half and uh, it's not really upset it at all um, but it's kept it back to the sort of shape I want. So that's Katsura and that's a really good one if you want the wonderful colours. This, uh, this is one called Jishoujo. Um, a lot of them have Japanese names, that's probably a lot of them bred. Uh, and this is done quite nicely. It's uh, a bit drafty here for them. Normally they say Aces don't really want it too drafty or too sunny or too exposed. But uh, they, they, to me they seem to be fa fairly tolerant. You do need to keep them well watered in the first year and they do, they do like good drainage. Wet soil, even though they often grow by ponds and things, the soil has to be dry around them. But this is a lovely foliage one. And it, at the moment it's only been here about it's been about eight or nine years and it's not got too big at all. It's probably grown about a third more than it was. So that's quite a nice uh, medium medium shaped one. I've been talking about the foliage but they came, come in all different, in different sizes as well. The thing to do is to go to somebody, go to a proper grower, someone who knows uh, about, about them and, and have a look at the varieties they've got uh, and uh, choose what you like. You know, they, they are a lovely tree, they're a beautiful tree for the garden very attractive, very graceful, very light and things can grow underneath them because they're not usually really got a dense foliage and as you know they're very very popular, everyone loves them. So good luck with them, you know, when you plant them, give them a jolly, make sure that as I said before the soil has to be well drained, lots of compost, uh, water them, love, the, love and care for them for the last first two or three years at least and then uh, they'll reward you with years and years of happiness. Well, as you could tell, that video was our very first foray into plant IDs for you. And we're going to continue along that vein for quite a long time now, certainly for the next few months. Thank you for watching. We've really enjoyed having you in Somerset with us. If you like that, do consider following us. No charge. Push the subscribe button. Ding the all-important notification bell. Enjoy the rest of your week. Until next time.